You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Friday, the 23rd of February, 2018. We see stocks are mixed for the day, gold and bonds up. Those of you who are following us on a daily basis, you've noticed over the last couple of days, we've changed our charts a little bit. And if you're a subscriber, you'll receive a link in your daily email and it will be for our new chart. We've changed the chart up a little bit by adding a moving average line, a 50 period moving average line and sort of a light gray. It used to be a solid black heavy line just to make it a little easier to see price movement, not have it confuse you. And we've added a purple line for the 200 period moving average. And we've also added on our charts a exponential moving average, a 200 period and a 50 period on the bottom of our charts. And again, the reasons that we have these, what we really do with EMA is it lags less and it is more sensitive to recent price movements. That's why we have it at the bottom. You can look for separation between the two when the markets are going up and those types of things. And we also use the simple moving average on the top where we have the candlesticks and you actually uh, actually see price movement because the simple moving average is really the true average of prices for the entire period and it's better suited to finding support and resistance levels. So we're going to jump right in to the charts, the weekly chart, as we always do. And we'll try to get this thing done in 10 minutes or less. Please make sure you are filling out your week, your daily market worksheet. Weekly market worksheet will happen at the close of the market tomorrow over the weekend. Daily market worksheets today, they're available at the website. You can see every day we post links to them. You also find them in your daily emails. And again, go to chartingwealth.com to sign up. What do we see going on with price movement? Well, the S&P 500 was up the day 0.13%. So far, little bitty spinning top candle, a green open box, wick on the bottom, wick on top, about the same on each side, and a green spinning top. Derivative oscillators continuing to heat up going down in the price percent oscillator is going down quite strongly, actually much stronger than the prior week. And when we go to the two-day chart, what do we see? Well, it's tipped over and headed down on the price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. And we see on the first day of this latest two-day candle that will complete on Friday, it again, lots of indecision. It is a close to being a doji, and again, red tending down. As we plug into the four-hour chart, we can tell even more. It looks like the market so far on the four-hour chart topped out somewhere around, oh gosh, well, the top of the candle, the very top of the candle, uh, 275.32, and of course, ended the day on our Heiken Ashi candlestick somewhere around uh, 271.45. Remember, Heiken Ashi's calculated differently, but you can see things tapping off on the two, the four-hour chart, tapping off on that 50-period moving average line. So you can see where things sort of hit that and then moved back over. That, again, is one reason we're sort of making sure that you guys pay more attention to these moving average lines that can but don't always provide some resistance in this case and support levels. So what we actually see happening is it does appear price percent oscillator moving down, derivative oscillator losing energy. If folks, we have a crossover going down on Friday on that four-hour chart, be ready to pull the trigger and jump into a virtual trade going down with, again, either a put or an inverse fund like SH. We keep telling you, just practice this, see how it goes. SH is the pro shares short. So in other words, if the market turns over and goes down, this will rotate over going up because it's an inverse fund and you can buy in at somewhere maybe around the one thirty around the thirty dollar mark. And I'm just this for instance, if it rotates over around there, jump in and then you can ride it up. Okay, that's how you make money when the market goes down. And again, we want you to practice that. Remember, not a stock calling service, we're an education firm. So we want you to practice virtual trades. Next. We move on to the Qs, QQQ, NASDAQ 100, the tech stocks. It looks different than the S&P 500. It is a, a bigger green up candle. However, the derivative oscillator is gaining downward momentum. The price percent oscillator is not totally flat. It's headed down. 
sort of running parallel down with the red signal line, not as strong as a potential down move on the S&P 500. As far as the weekly chart goes, we look at the two-day. Again, we see things topping out somewhere around the 165.50 mark or so. It sort of hit that level and stayed there. We see that the last full two-day candle ending on Wednesday the 21st was a red open box candle. So far, the first day of the latest two-day candle, again, a red open box candle hitting about the same point. Derivative oscillator is losing downward momentum, and price percent oscillator is flat at best. Again, getting closer to a potential crossover going up, which is not necessarily good, but it has not done that yet. It's still technically in the negative, so we'll continue to pay attention to what's going on on this two-day chart. And, of course, we will plug into the four-hour chart and take a full look at that. What do we see on the four-hour chart? Of course, it topped out somewhere, again, candle, the Heiken Ashi candlestick somewhere about 166, and uh, yeah, around 166 or so, and then started heading down. Actually, we've seen dojis and then a spinning top over the last day and a half, and the price percent oscillator is headed down. So keep your eye, along with the derivative oscillator, keep your eye on this price percent oscillator. If you see a crossover going down again, it is another one where you can look for a either a put or an inverse fund in the queues. Uh, that is on the NASDAQ 100. There's several options. If you've not listened to, if you've not watched our video, inverse ETFs, how to make money when markets crash, you need to do that. It is available at both our YouTube channel, and if you go there, please subscribe. We're getting close to 4,000 subscribers. Hundreds of people download it every day, sometimes over 1,000 watch it. So please go there. Also, you should be able to find that at chartingwealth.com. So again, good training, good stuff. Please make the most of what we have to offer you for free while it's free. Okay, next we're moving to TLT. That's the 20-year bond fund. This has been quite beautiful since we had the weekly vertical crossover going down all the way back on the 5th of January. It has just continued to trundle down. Price movement well below the weekly trend line. Tr weekly chart just continues to move down. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum along with the price percent oscillator. As we look at the two-day chart, we can see, again, continued down price movement. We're going to need to redraw our two-day trend line. And, of course, not too hard to redraw. In fact, pretty nice. We always try to connect three candles if possible. And maybe we're going to be able to do that if the price movement continues down for the last day of the latest two-day candle. Might be able to pretty much connect three points. We see the derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. Price percent oscillator still headed down. Tell a little bit more as we jump into that four-hour chart. And it's just flat, laminated. The price percent oscillator is laminated on the red signal line. And again, we have seen some more down movement. We were sort of flattening out somewhere around the 117 mark, 117.85. And it's nice to see things down to the 117.19 mark. Looking, it looks like at the end of the day, there might have been, you got to, and again, don't, don't rely a lot when things are laminated. Oh, it's, oh, there's a crossover because you can look at it real, real close and zoom in and it looks like the blues crossed over the red. If there's an up morning, it'll pull right away. So don't hold your breath on that. Derivative oscillator has turned negative. Price percent oscillator is just laminated on that red signal line. So we'll just wait and see what we see. But again, if there's a strong crossover going down, those of you who are out on the bonds might look to jump back in on those since we did have a rotation over going up back on the 13th on the four-hour chart. If you pulled the plug, that's fine because, folks, you did fabulous prior to that. I mean, what, you saw this thing run all the way down to, what, about 116 from a jumping in point somewhere around 125? Let me tell you, $9.00 over a month and a half, huh, that's good money in anybody's book on a $125 ETF. Are you kidding me? That is incredible, incredible percentage, well done. Okay, lastly, we're going to go back to our four-hour chart. I'm sorry, our weekly chart, we're going to get to the four-hour chart. We're going to look at gold up 0.51% for the day. 
Gold is currently in an uptrend on the weekly chart. The price percent oscillator is actually headed sort of sideways and down, derivative oscillator losing energy on the weekly chart. Gold really peaked out. We had three good weeks of a gold trade up to a high of about 129.52 from a jumping in point somewhere around 123, 124. So that's pretty good in a three-week period, is it not? 123.50, something like that, to 129. If you wrote it all the way up, quite beautiful. What's gold done over the last four weeks? It's, well, going into the fourth week, it's really sort of slid sideways. Three of the four candles, if we're going to look at this latest candle with one more day to draw, are red candles. So far this week, we have a doji, means lots of indecision, and again, gold going just barely down on the price percent oscillator. As we focus a little more on things, we can, of course, see that gold crossed over back on the 7th on the two-day chart going down, went down for another two days, bounced up, and over the last three days has been headed down still in the negative on the price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator still negative. As we look at that four-hour chart, what are we seeing? We're seeing gold sort of bottoming somewhere around the 126 mark. And again, derivative oscillator still negative, price percent oscillator still negative, but keep your eye on things. Remember, all things being equal, the market does tend to move in the direction of the largest chart, which is the weekly. But this four-hour chart, we want to see better trending on this. We don't want to see it just immediately rotate back over. We need nice, long, solid trends for this four-hour chart to be as beautiful as it was like back in mid-December to uh, mid-January, just gorgeous, you know, where you have these nice long movements and where you just don't have a bunch of sideways tracking, which means that your oscillators don't oscillate well and aren't accurate. So we're hoping that gold will continue in this down move and not pop right back up again because it'll mean that our four-hour chart will start working better and more reliably. That's where we are, folks, as we end the day on Thursday, go into Friday the 23rd of February. Please get ready for the weekend broadcast. We will be doing the comprehensive review and forecast at the close of business on Friday. And if you don't have your weekly market worksheet, go download it. It's available at Charting Wealth. Under every daily post that we do, you'll see the link to the PDF. And of course, everyone who subscribes, you always have those links in your subscription in the email we send you every day. God bless my friends. All the best from the entire team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.